Which GTA game has the worst police? Now that's a thing to think. I'm going with GTA San Andreas. I've been playing GTA games for years and one thing that always gets my heart racing is when those blue and red lights start flashing behind me. Now don't get me wrong, I love San Andreas. The story, the characters, the map, it's all classic. But when it comes to the police, I can't help but feel a bit let down. In other GTA games, especially the later ones like GTA 4 and V, the cops are relentless. They'll chase you through alleyways, set up roadblocks, and even call in helicopters. It's intense, and it keeps you on your toes. But in San Andreas, I could practically have a picnic in the middle of the street, and the cops would just drive by, waving. Where's the pressure? Where's the challenge? I think it's all down to the game mechanics. San Andreas was made back in 2004, and game design has come a long way since then. The developers at Rockstar were more focused on giving us a huge map to explore and a deep storyline to follow. Don't believe me? Try this. Next time you're playing San Andreas, get your wanted level up to 3 stars. In any other GTA game, you'd be in for a world of hurt. But here, you can pretty much outrun them by just turning a few corners. It's like they forget about you as soon as you're out of sight. Oh well, he's gone. Back to the station for some coffee. I even tested this theory in different parts of the map, Los Santos, San Fierro, Las Venturas, and it's the same story everywhere. The country cops are even more laid back if that's possible. They're probably too busy chasing farm animals to bother with a high-speed pursuit. Now I'm not saying I want the police to be unfair or impossible to escape from. That wouldn't be fun either. But there's a sweet spot, you know? A point where they're tough enough to make you sweat, but not so tough that you can't outsmart them. San Andreas just doesn't hit that spot for me. So yeah, that's why I think San Andreas has the worst police force in the GTA series. Alright, let's keep this GTA police ranking rolling. Next up on the chopping block is Grand Theft Auto 3. Now, before you start typing angry comments, remember, I'm not hating on the game. GTA 3 is a straight-up legend. It's the granddaddy of 3D open-world games, and I've got nothing but respect for it. But when it comes to its police force? Well, let's just say they're not winning any commendations. Now, I can't blame them too much. GTA 3 was the first 3D entry in the series, and Rockstar was basically inventing the wheel here. The technology in 2001 wasn't what it is today. Heck, this was the era of dial-up internet and flip phones. So, creating a sophisticated police AI that could adapt to a fully 3D environment? That was asking a lot. In GTA 3, the police behavior is pretty basic. Get a wanted level, and they'll chase you. But their tactics? Let's just say they wouldn't make it into any police academy textbooks. They mostly just follow you in a straight line. The higher wanted levels don't change much either. Sure, you get more cops, maybe an FBI car or two, but their strategies don't evolve. They don't use the city layout to their advantage or try to predict where you're going. In later GTA games, the police get smarter with each wanted level. In GTA 3, they just add more cars to the conga line behind you. But here's the thing. I can't rank GTA 3's cops lower than San Andreas because, well, they were first. They didn't have anything to build on. The developers at Rockstar were pioneers, coding a 3D world from scratch. Just making the cops drive and shoot in a 3D space was a huge achievement back then. Think about it. Before GTA 3, most games had fixed camera angles or were side-scrollers. Suddenly, you've got this living, breathing city where you can go anywhere. The fact that the police could even follow you around corners without glitching out was impressive. They laid the groundwork for every open-world game that followed. Next is GTA Vice City. First off, let's give credit where it's due. Vice City's cops are definitely more on their game compared to their counterparts in GTA 3 and San Andreas. Released in 2002, just a year after GTA 3, you can tell Rockstar learned some lessons. The VCPD isn't just following you around like lost puppies they've got a bit more bite to their bark. The city's layout also plays into their hands. Unlike the wide open streets of Los Santos and San Andreas, Vice City has tighter, twistier roads, especially in areas like Little Haiti or Vice Point. This geography works in the police's favor. They use those narrow alleys and sharp turns to try and corner you. It's like they know their own turf and try to use it against you. Smart move, VCPD.
But here's the thing. Once you've spent some serious time in Vice City, once you've run guns for Phil Cassidy or taken over businesses for the Ferrelli family, you start to see through their tactics. Their aggression becomes predictable. Sure, they'll chase you hard, but their patterns start to feel scripted. I've lost count of how many times I've used the same tricks to shake them off. Get a few stars on you, then head to the islands between Vice Beach and the mainland. Zip through those tight waterways, and the cops just can't keep up. Or, my personal favorite, the pay and spray loop. In Vice City, these spots reset almost instantly. So you can go in, come out, get chased for a bit, then duck back in. Repeat this a few times, and it's like you're in a Benny Hill skit, not a high-stakes police chase. Another thing that makes Vice City's cops easier to handle is the abundance of powerful weapons and sturdy vehicles. By mid-game, you're rolling with Uzis, M4s, maybe even a minigun. Up against standard-issue police revolvers? It's not even a fair fight. Pair that firepower with a Phoenix muscle car or an Infernus supercar, and suddenly, outrunning or outgunning the police becomes almost trivial. Don't get me wrong, I have mad love for Vice City. The 80s vibe, the music, the outrageous characters, it's all iconic. And its police force is definitely a step up in the series. They've got more personality than their predecessors, shouting Florida-tinged threats as they chase you. You're going down, smart guy, always makes me chuckle. But for seasoned players, for those of us who've been running from digital cops since the top-down days, Vice City's finest just don't pose a lasting challenge. Once you know the map and have a few heavy weapons, they become more of an annoyance than a threat. It's like they peaked in the police academy, but never did any additional training. All right, people, we're getting into the heavy hitters now. Next up in my GTA Police Force rankings, Los Santos Finest from Grand Theft Auto V. Now we're not just talking about any old cops here. From the moment you start stirring up trouble in GTA V, you can tell these cops mean business. It's not just about their aggression or firepower, it's their intelligence and reactivity. They feel less like scripted NPCs and more like actual officers trying to uphold the law, even if they're a bit corrupt, but hey, it's Los Santos. But where GTA V's police really shine is when things escalate. Hit three stars, and it's not just a numbers game like in older titles. These cops work as a unit. They'll set up rolling roadblocks, attempt to box you in, and even try pity maneuvers to spin you out. Cops in GTA V don't just follow predefined paths, they dynamically respond to your actions and the environment. Cut through a backyard? They'll split up, try to flank you, hide in a building? They'll attempt to secure exits, it's eerily realistic. Their radio chatter adds another layer of immersion. It's not just generic lines, they actually describe your actions and location. Suspect last seen near Mirror Park, driving a red sports car. Or, be advised, Suspect is armed and has military training. Thanks, Trevor. This makes you feel like you're really being hunted, that there's a coordinated effort to take you down. Air support in GTA V is no joke either. Police helicopters aren't just for show or to give you a target to shoot at. They coordinate with ground units, use spotlights to track you at night, and provide real-time updates. Trying to hide from the chopper's searchlight in the dark alleys of Davis or the forests of Polito Bay, heart poundingly tense. But it's not just about high-speed chases. Even in smaller interactions, GTA 5's cops feel more alive. Walk too close to a squad car, and the officer might warn you to back off. Stand near a crime scene and they'll tell you to move along. These little details make them feel like part of the world, not just obstacles. The difference is stark when you move from Los Santos to Blaine County. City cops are tactical and by the book while the rural sheriffs have this Wild West vibe, more shooty, less talky. It shows that Rockstar thought about how law enforcement culture would vary across the map. That's next level world building. Now, why aren't they my top pick? Well, as good as they are, there's still room for improvement. Now for the best, GTA 4. When GTA 4 dropped in 2008, it was a whole new ball game. Gone were the more arcade-like physics of the previous titles. Liberty City felt gritty, weighty, real. And nowhere was this more apparent than with the LCPD. From the moment you step into Nico Bellic's shoes, you realize these cops don't play. GTA 4's cops are relentless. They don't just pursue you. 
They hunt you down with a determination that's almost personal. Their driving is aggressive, precise. They'll use oncoming traffic to block your path, perform coordinated boxing maneuvers, and if you think you're clever by cutting through an alley, there's probably a cruiser waiting at the other end. They know their city, and they use that knowledge ruthlessly. But it's not just their driving that makes them formidable. These officers can shoot, and I mean really shoot. In earlier GTA games, police gunfights often felt like a war of attrition. Who has more bullets? Not in GTA 4. Take cover behind a car, and they'll flank you. Pop your head out, and you'll be met with disturbingly accurate fire. I've had more close calls in Liberty City gunfights than in all other GTA cities combined. The realism of GTA 4's physics and damage modeling adds to the intensity. Cars don't just bounce off each other, they crumple, they spin out. Catch a lucky shot from a police pistol, and Nico visibly limps, his movements hampered. It creates this palpable sense of vulnerability. You're not some invincible crime lord. You're a guy trying not to get killed or arrested. Now let's talk about the ballads of Gay Tony. If the base game's LCPD is tough, the ones you face as Luis Lopez are on a whole other level. It's like Rockstar looked at player feedback, saw that some hardcore gamers found GTA 4's cops manageable, and said, Oh, you think you're tough? Try this. In Gay Tony, police response times are faster, almost unnervingly so. Start trouble in Algonquin's high-end districts, and it feels like cops materialize out of thin air. They're better equipped, too. More armored vehicles, better body armor, and they're quicker to call in noose teams. I swear, hit three stars in this expansion, and it's like taking on a small army. But the real game changer in Gay Tony, police helicopters. In base GTA 4, choppers are dangerous but beatable. In this expansion, they're your worst nightmare. They fly more erratically, making them harder to shoot down. Worse, their snipers are dead shots. Try hiding on a rooftop, and these guys will pick you off like it's target practice. The expansions also introduce more varied police tactics. In Gay Tony, they'll sometimes go radio silent, trying to ambush you. Or, they'll set up choke points in areas like Middle Park, using the terrain to limit your escape routes. There are even instances where they'll try to disable your vehicle by targeting tires or the engine block. It feels less like standard video game AI and more like they're adapting to your reputation as a high-profile criminal. Let's not forget the atmosphere, either. Liberty City's industrial areas, its grimy alleys, and towering skyscrapers. This environment works in the cops' favor. Dim lighting, lots of cover, echoing gunshots. Every chase has this cinematic, almost Hong Kong action movie vibe. And the officers lean into it, shouting threats that would make movie cops proud. We're gonna take you down, and I'm gonna get a promotion. The voice acting and animation in GTA 4 also sell the cops' toughness. When an LCPD officer yells, Stop or I'll shoot! It doesn't sound like a stock line. There's anger, frustration, even a hint of fear. These aren't cardboard cutouts. They feel like stressed-out city cops who've seen too much and are ready to snap. That's why, in my book, GTA 4, especially The Ballads of Gay Tony, has the best, most formidable police force in the entire series. They're smart, they're ruthless, and they make you feel like you're really being hunted. The technology allowed for more realistic physics and AI, but it's the design choices, the emphasis on tactical gameplay, the unforgiving damage model, the sheer aggression, that push them to the top. I've played every GTA title, caused chaos in every virtual city. But Liberty City's finest? They're the only ones who consistently make me second-guess my criminal antics. So there you have it. My complete rankings of GTA police forces, from the laid-back LSPD of San Andreas to the elite units of Liberty City. It's been a wild ride through the series' history, looking at how far virtual law enforcement has come. Do you agree with my top pick? Think another city's cops deserve the crown? Let me know in the comments. Until next time, subscribe to the channel and take care.